I've previously shown off my Guardian Vortex modification deck profile, but now it's time to look at the other Digimon Liberator starter deck, and that is Fable Waltz or ST19. Now, this deck I've done a little bit less in terms of modifications compared to my Guardian Vortex deck, which is the one that I run at locals whenever I'm there, or basically whenever I play Digimon. This deck is one that my best mate plays. I lent him this deck every time that he comes to locals with me, and he does enjoy it, and it's kind of like an easier deck to play compared to what I've done with my Guardian Vortex deck. This one is more just like the two ST19 starter decks smushed together and then adding in some of the EX7 cards and the promo cards that are released around that time. So let's get into it and there are a few additional modifications that I'm thinking about doing and I'll mention them at the end. So in terms of our egg deck, I can, can never decide. So I've got three of one and two of the other, that being both the Kyaramon from EX7 as well as the Kyaramon from the starter deck. Both are pretty good. I do have just more of the EX7 ones because I like the art more. They're sort of similar. One just gives you your opponent's negative 2000 DP during your turn for your secure, for their security Digimon, which is pretty handy. And then the starter deck one has the draw one when attacking if you have another Digimon, which is pretty cool, especially because sometimes this deck ends up playing a little bit like Rookie Rush only if, uh, if I don't get enough of the level sixes out. So that's pretty good as well. Lots of card draw to help you kind of uh, filter through your deck so you find the pieces that you want and I but I just prefer the negative 2000 DP to the opponent's security Digimon um, but just me and a lot of the uh, cards in this deck have that same inherited effect so even though only one card in this has jamming it's almost not super necessary because a lot of the time the security Digimon have significant debuffs anyway Onto the main deck, so I have two of the starter deck Junkmon. It's pretty decent, it's fine, I like the art. I think I've just kept it in because Orisa in Digimon Liberator has Junkmon. And it just has the, the decoy ability and of course it has the barrier inherited ability. Barrier being that if this Digimon will be deleted in battle, you can trash the top of the security stack to prevent that deletion. It's not as good as the rest of the deck, but I guess it's just kind of there because it's cute um, and it has that decoy ability because you, in this deck you, there's a lot of uh, puppet trait Digimon deletion so you can kind of protect that I guess and use this as like that, that decoy but otherwise it's not as useful as the other cards in the deck. Next we have the, all the Shumons, we have the X7 Shumon which is the evolution cost reduction Shumon and again we have the inherited effect of getting the opponent's secure Digimon down a little bit by 3000. Next we have the promo Shumon, I'm running two of these. I probably would up it for, to four and then just get rid of the Junkmon but I don't know I, only, I think I'm, I only have one more coming so then I'll be like one short of having that the full playset of the promo Shumon. So this is the one that on play, one of your opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus one until end of their turn. Pretty decent, but I don't think I like it as much as I like the promo Shoto, Shotomon? No, Terramon in my Shoto deck. But that's just me. It's, it's still fine, but it's not as, I, I don't like it as much as I like the Terramon version of the promo. And then of course we have the starter deck one, which is probably my favorite of the ones. It is the, the searching one, so on play you reveal the top three cards. You get one with the puppet trait and one with the liberator trait among them into the hand. Same story as what we have for the Terramon from the starter deck. It's probably my favorite one because I do like getting that search out there just because uh, sometimes I may not have a good hand and it, the same sort of thing applies to the Terramon Vortex deck. Next we have our level 4s which are 
mainly Shushumon. I don't have any of the promo Shushumon, which I do want to add to this deck if I ever get my hands on them. So this is just kind of what I have at the moment. So the EX7 Shushumon is the one that is same as the EX7 Galemon, that if you have one or fewer Tamers, you may play an Orisa from your hand without playing the cost similar to the Galemon that lets you play a Shoto without playing the cost if you only have one or fewer. And again, we have the same inherited effect of the Security Digimon debuff. Next we have the Starter Deck Shumon, or Shushumon, which is the one that you can play a cost of four or less from your hand if it's destroyed from security. That's pretty decent. It's got Overclock, which of course is the mechanic for this deck, and that's for the whole Shumon evolution line. And that is at the end of your turn, if you delete one of your tokens or other proper Digimon, this Digimon may attack the, the player without suspending. Super decent. I do like it. And that's kind of when the all the inherited effects come into play because of this overclock ability. Because you're wanting to attack every single turn if possible, but you don't necessarily want to risk your Digimon, especially if you're already sacrificing one of your Digimon in order for it to have that overclock. Next we have Jamming uh, to, to Bukatmon. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't really think Jamming is super necessary for this deck on the basis that all these inherited effects almost give a jamming anyway, uh, obviously not really, but they debuff your opponent's Digimon enough, and if you have enough of those inherited effects, you don't really need that jamming ability because most of the time they're debuffed enough that you'll win anyway. But it is nice to have a Digimon with just jamming and then you can just kind of play it, like you can hard play it if you want, or you can evolve to it for two. It does have the inherited effect of barrier, so you can not delete it by trashing the, the top of your security. I don't really like Barrier. It, I mentioned it with the, the Junkmon, but sometimes it's a little bit risky to just... I'm going to save this Digimon by trashing my first security. Unless you really, really want your Digimon to stay there, I suppose. But most of the time, it's not as useful as the other cards in this deck. Then we have Chaparamon. So all my level 5s are the Chaparamon. This is the X7 one, which is the overclock one. And when it did when you digivolve to it, you may play one level three Digimon card with a puppet trait from your hand without paying the cost. So pretty decent. I like it. I think I prefer the starter deck one though. Um, even though I do like how it has overclock because I do like it having that mechanic. The starter deck one when digivolving or on play, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 for the, the turn. And if you've got three or more Digimon on the field, uh, you, you increase that DP reduction by 3,000. So you get minus 6,000 on a Digimon, that's pretty decent. Especially if you get this out early enough in the game and they've only got something with 6,000 or less DP, you can delete it. That's, that's pretty cool. I do like that. So I do prefer that, but it does have uh, the fact that it doesn't have the overclock ability. And in terms of their inherited abilities, they're both the same. If uh, this Digimon would leave the, the battle area other than any of your effects, you can delete one of your tokens or puppetrate Digimon so it doesn't leave. And that's pretty useful, especially because you'll have your level 6 on top of it, to, obviously to have that inherited effect. And maybe you don't want to lose your level 6, so you get to sacrifice a token or a puppet to save it. So the level 6s are all Cinderellamon because I'm boring. EX7 one has the overclock trait, of course. They both, they both do. And this one has start of your main phase or when digivolving. You may play one familiar token and the, Digimon, the token has 3000 DP and on deletion one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3000 DP for the turn. And when attacking, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus three thousand. Sorry, minus six thousand for the turn. That's pretty good. You effectively get to board wipe if they've got a pretty low DP field. That's cool. Do like that. And of course, you get those familiar tokens. Though I think I still prefer the starter deck one just a little bit more. Uh, hence why I have four of it rather than just the two I have of the EX7 one. So this one still has the overclock ability there. It has Blocker, and also when Digivolving, you may play the two familiar tokens without paying their cost, and it's the same token as the other one does. 
The only thing that I prefer the EX7 one for is the fact that you are consistently getting more familiar tokens. You're getting one each turn, except with this one, you're only getting the two when you first digivolve to it. So I do like the fact that you're getting more and more tokens, but I haven't found that particularly too useful because of all the abilities that play level threes. And I can just sack a level three. I'm like, it, it tends to be pretty worth my time to do so. Then of course we have Digimon Liberator, which you can reveal the top three cards and you reveal something, you take one that has Liberator from that revealed pile. And then you can play a three cost or less from your hand without paying the cost. I have this in my Vortex deck, pretty good. Uh, you can play that and then you can play your Searching Shumon. So you really can get a bunch of cards you want or have a bit of a look if you're missing any sp specific pieces from the deck that you'd want in play. Next up is one of the more newer cards, it's Future Potential, and you choose one Tamer. You may play one Digimon card with the same colour as this chosen Tamer with the play cost of three or less from your hand or trash without playing the cost. This is useful because you're effectively getting a three cost for two, that's pretty cool. It has the security effect of you can play one Tamer from your hand without playing the cost, and then you add this card to your hand, it's pretty good. Next, of course, we have the, tr the physical training, which is just the yellow version of the training. Top two cards, add one yellow card from among them into your hand. Rest goes to the bottom of the deck. It has the delay ability of reducing your evolution cost by two. And of course, the security effect is you just place it in the battle area. Next, we have Wonder Stomp. Again, it's kind of similar to Future Potential, except you get to draw one you get to play a level three Digimon card with puppet trait from your hand without playing the cost. Um, sometimes I'm like, maybe I prefer this to, to Future Potential. They are both very similar anyway. The difference being the security effect get, lets you play a tamer and then have it. This one just plays the main effect, but this one does have card draw. So I only have it as a one-off. I think I had it as a two-off and then I removed one of them for my extra future potential. There's that. And I'm just realizing, I think I actually put a Vortex Resonance in this deck, but I can't remember what I removed for it. I think I removed one physical training for a Vortex Resonance, but I'm not 100%. But that's a very new addition anyway. Then we have the yellow memory boost, so reveal top four cards, add one Digimon card to your hand, place remaining cards at the bottom of the deck in any order, then place the card in the battle area. The delay effect just gives you two memory, so, that, so that's kind of fine. Next we have our tamers, so we have three of each. The EX7 Arisa lets you have, a, if you spend the Digimon, when one of your puppet Digimon die, you may play a level three puppet into play without playing the cost. That's pretty good, especially because a lot of the times you are deleting your puppets, so you can delete one puppet and then get another one back. That's pretty decent, especially with things like um, when you're sacrificing to either Overclock or the Chaparamon Inherited Effect. That's pretty good. And then of course we have the other Arisa, which is the one from the starter deck, which is your memory setter, and it also gives you the ability to give a Puppet Digimon Rush, if it, which means that it can attack the first turn that it comes into play. That's pretty good because a lot of the time you're playing a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of babies into play, and you can just attack each turn with them if you so choose. Again, it's risky, but then that's why you have this. So if you attack with a level three, the level three dies, and you have this Arisa and a level three in your hand, you can tap this, and then you get another Puppet in play, which you can then feed to the Overclock ability. So they, I do have a few uh, things that I kind of want to add, but I'm not 100% sure on. I don't want to stray away from the puppet trait too much, and a lot of these don't have the puppet trait, because then a lot of the effects don't apply. First, there's the reinforcing memory boost. So it's nice to reveal the top two. One goes to hand, one is your a new security card, and it does have the delay effect of giving you three memory. But it is a six cost, so that's the only reason I haven't put it in the deck because that's kind of rough. But the basically the security recovery is pretty nice in general. And next, I kind of want to put in Betsumon just for its Digivolve Trash One Draw Two and the fact that it's a puppet. I'm honestly considering move, uh, removing Taboo Catmon for this one just because it is nice to be able to draw those cards, especially because 
<laughs> sometimes you don't have the right pieces and card draw helps for that. And I'm pretty sure that I'm trying to find which one lets me play from. Yeah, so Future Potential lets you play level threes from your trash anyway. So the trash, the trashing one, you might just choose to trash a puppet level three, and then you can play that. So you've got that option. The other thing is that we have the Shine Greymon Burst Ace to get a Tamer card and also it has security plus one. That's always good if you want to do some beatdown. Ruin Mode has security recovery. Chohakamon is a puppet and gives opponent security neg one. And in general there actually are quite a few security affecting cards that I was looking at and they could be helpful. So we've got the BT1TK which search security which is pretty handy. You get to know what's in your security and you also get to take something from there if there's something that fits the card's requirements. There's also Valkyrie Mod Ace. I just love Valkyrie Mod in general. And I think that's just the majority of the reason why I looked at like, hey, I could put that in my deck. It's yellow and it's also Valkyrie Mod. And I, liked, I do like Valkyrie Mod. So there is that. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't have a promo Risa or the promo Shoe Shoe. The form is nice to have to get a shoe on out and play and to a degree C evolution cost and the ladder because it gives jamming to things and, or it has jamming rather and that's pretty decent as well. The promo Risa is more or less just the same as the promo Shoto which you play it and then you can play a level 3 from your hand which of course if you have a starter Shumon that's a good one because it plays for free and then you get to search or not search but reveal a top 3 and then take two of the cards effectively which I do a lot with the Shoto deck now that I've got the promo Shoto so that that is pretty handy and of course the uh, the ladder has jamming which is the promo Shushu but again I don't have any either of those so they're not in the deck and then lastly it's kind of like in a lot of green and yellow decks and that is Cherubimon Ace it seems just like a nice to have a looking a lot of these yellow or green decks they do run this. I kind of want one, but I also kind of want one for my Terrymon deck as well. But uh, that just happened. That's just, let's just see where that happens uh, if I ever get my hands on one, because they're surprisingly pricey for a an SR. It's not a secret. It's just an SR, but uh, I guess they're kind of used as a a good thing, just as a nice to have a one of. So yeah, that was my deck, which yes, I do call my deck silly names. So this one is Fable Christoph Waltz, because he's one of my favourite actors. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Um, again, I, I haven't really played this deck too much. I've played it a few times, but for the most part, my best mate plays it at Locals, and he seems to be enjoying it because it is a fairly easy uh, deck to play, and it doesn't stray away too much from having the puppet trait, whereas my Guardian Vortex deck does have things that aren't the uh, the the right trait for the rest of the deck, like Paladin mode, like um, like the Palmon, like Lilymon. They're they're not the they're not Avian or Birds or Vortex Warriors or Liberator. So sometimes I am missing them a lot uh, with searches like Digimon Liberator or the Star Deck Shumon, which has you take a puppet and a Liberator in my Guardian Vortex deck. Sometimes I'm revealing those three, and they're all like the plants, so they're all like Palmon or Lilymon or Paladin mode. And then, of course, I have to bot deck all three because neither of them apply for what I'm looking for. So, yeah, this one hasn't really strayed away as much as the Guardian Vortex one, but uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about this deck. Uh, similar to the Guardian Vortex deck, I'll probably be doing an updated one when EX8 comes out, which is January, so stay tuned for that. But for the moment, this is what the deck is. I'm not sure, I think I might actually add the reinforcing memory boost just to test it. Um, I'd probably take out the yellow memory boost for, or one of the yellow memory boosts for it. But it's just the six cost is rough, but the recovery is nice. So I might have to test that one. The other ones are kind of like ones that I'm not sure about. Betsumon, you might take out um, Taboo Catmon for it. Uh, one last thing before I finish off, a lot of people uh, do run this as a chess deck with all the Pawn Chessmon and those evolution line cards, that is valid and so super cool and I've seen it and it does go pretty well, but I wanted something kind of unique so I'm doing it my own way and trying to make it my own deck, but it, it's, 
yeah, I'm still not sure about these one-offs, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Let me know those in the comments. Like this video for my inability to make normal names. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell your enemies. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!